Haley Show and Authors Corner. I'm excited to welcome the host of Authors Corner, Frank Fiore. Frank, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest for sure, Frank. Yes, I'm, I'm doing very well. And yes, I would like to hear what he has to say. Exactly. My co-host Paul Hollis is here with me as well. And I'm excited to welcome author Floyd Rumor. Uh, Floyd, thanks for stopping by, sir. And uh, tell me how you got started writing first. And then I know Frank has questions for you. Well, you are very welcome. Thank you, Neil and Frank, Paul, for having me on today. Uh, how did I get start writing? Well, I, I, I've had a 30-year-plus nonprofit career, so I've done a lot of grant writing across that time. Uh, but I got started with this book series about 20 years ago in one way or the other, after experimenting for about 10 years prior to that with some of the principles in the book. Uh, the idea came out of a nonprofit organization that I ran for 16 years called Stages of Learning. And we operationalized the ideas in the Making Shakespeare Come Alive in Schools books back then and served about 40,000 children across the organization's life cycle. After leaving that organization, the board, staff, funders, and so on wanted me to write the best practices up into some books. So that's what I did. I took a year or two to do that, uh, had an agent, had another two other publishers. One publisher went bankrupt, the other publisher merged. Uh, so I self-published, had them up for about 10 years, and then uh, Routledge uh, came into the picture uh, after I reached out to an acquisition editor there about the possibility of working with me on it. And they said, yes, and here we are. We expect the books to come out in uh, sometime in 2025. Okay, great. So basically, what? how are the books, how do they help, again, nonprofits and schools, right? Is that a lot of the stories of the books? The, the, some of the stories actually come from some of those case studies. Yes, that's true. But whereas stages of learning relied on a collaborative model between a classroom teacher and a teaching artist, these books are based or are intended to help a classroom teacher do a unit of study in theater and drama, culminating in a short abridged version of one of Shakespeare's plays. Oh, wow. Okay. Frank, are you a, fa a fan of Shakespeare? Yeah, I love, love I love what the Shakespeare in love. I love, I love what Hollywood has done to some of the Shakespeare plays. Oh, what fools these mortals be. I, I, I come from a, a classical education. And yeah, we were we had to read uh, we had to read Romeo and Juliet, Caesar. Um, I mean, and yeah, I'm not quite familiar with it. Not that we liked it doing it, but we, we were forced to do it. So. Well, then Frank, you raised a very important point because when Shakespeare wrote these plays, they were considered trash, popular <laughs> entertainment like the Housewives of New York. Oh, wow. I, I, I see now your, your Neil, your face. That is exactly the reaction yeah. many teachers have because children are taught sitting in chairs, you know, concepts, ideas, themes that Shakespeare never really intended. He intended the stories, the plays to be heard. They would say, we're going to hear a play very much the way we would say, like we're going to a concert today. But then what, how do these interpretations happen then? Well, the children interpret the plays. I'm encouraging teachers to stay, take a step back, which is one of the reasons the four stage at plays, Othello, Julius Caesar, Hamlet, and uh, uh, Henry V, are some of the lesser known plays so that teachers don't bring their adult biases. Uh, children will find entirely new interpretations the way, for example, children at PS6 in Manhattan interpreted Hamlet as the archetypal Avenger. I have acted and directed Shakespeare plays for years and I never saw that particular approach. And the kids, not only did they knock it out, out of the park playing the Avenger, but they taught me something new about this character that I had never really thought of before. Do you think the movies like Shakespeare in Love and, and the very, very early movie, uh, the uh, Mid Mid Midsummer Night's Dream, or in fact, that was remade later, do you think using that as an in introduction to a, to a course for the kids and then get into the into the book itself and, and, and see, if it was, see how the movie reflected uh, the play? Do you think that? Yeah, Frank, that I think what you're getting at is trying to find a way to engage children in the plays. 
And a lot of times our entry point as adults, as I mentioned before, we're sitting down, but as a movie, as a story, it's a great way to get children involved. And the approach on, is, uh, with Stage It is not to do too much talking, but to get kids on their feet, day one, on your feet, here are your lines. Since children at this age like to act out anyway, our approach is let's give them world-class literature to do it. And we're going to tell a story, like as in a movie. And children love to play the characters. They love to rehearse the scenes and interpret the speech and movement. That's the wow. And, and I think it's such a great thing, Frank. This is fantastic for schools uh, to all be able to utilize. Well, you know, a classical education is just it, the information in classical education that I got, that I received, that my sister, my wife did. I mean, that's an education. And of course, you're not going to find any of that in any kind of public school district that, that these days. And it's, it's, it's important. It is important. Except but it's a mission. But it's a mission for you, Floyd, to go get it to these public schools. Well, that's right. You know, and we did that through stages of learning. It, it existed for 16 years. We trained actors to actually go in and be teachers. And what we saw over time was that these children were uh, sort of developmentally drawn to this material. They they would vibrate with enthusiasm, but then the organization lost funding. So essentially what the organization was doing was giving the schools a cheap way out. Instead of hiring a drama teacher, they could hire a teaching artist and not one of those schools hired a drama teacher. So one of the cases I'm trying to make with this book series is that drama is essential for children ages nine to 12 and a half, 13, because they like to act out naturally. And if we can tap children into that, we can teach them almost, almost anything. It doesn't have to be Shakespeare. You know, it's in the public domain. That's one of the reasons we use it in this in the books. But they could be acting out anything, right? And this is what I I think that it would be perfect. I really think this is going to be perfect for uh, to get out to schools. Is it a mission now after you had this organization now to get the books out to these schools and for Thank teachers you. that so that the teachers can utilize this in their classrooms, especially elementary teachers that really need to do stuff that's not so driven on curriculum? Exactly. I think, yes, that is the mission here. I, I'm i on a mission to get these books into every teacher on the planet who teaches nine to 12 and a half year olds. Uh, you know, thank you for the invitation to appear today on your show. This is one way we're going to get the word out, but there's a lot of work to be done because there's, you know, it's like Sisyphus pushing the rock up the educational policy hill. The arts are not particularly valued in the United States, even though they're obligatory in most private school settings. And one would ask ourselves, if it's good enough for the private school kids, why aren't our public school kids getting it? Great point. Go ahead, Frank, given our questions, I do have one more to, to ask Floyd. Yeah, well, there's so much that, there's so much of Shakespeare in our culture and people don't even know it, you know, call them a Shylock, people, you know, you know mm -hmm. Words come up, and uh, you know, and uh, a name by other a rose by other other name which can smell the sweet. You know, these concepts come up, and and with kids today, you bring up these wording, and they look at you like you got two heads. I mean, there's certain things that should be in our culture that they should understand and recognize. And I think that stuff like Shakespeare and other the classics uh, should, you know, that that is necessary that they know that they know these things before have a proper education. I, I agree with you, Frank. It, you cannot be an English speaker and not receive some education in Shakespeare. Because if you don't receive some education in Shakespeare, you don't know the English language as well as you think you do. He invented over 3,000 words, around 3,000 words. Everything from elbow to addiction were, were coined by him. And he came up with some sayings like you just alluded to, many of which are Greek to me. Uh, he didn't invent that saying, he's reiterating it from another source, but he popularized it. And everything from a rose by any other name shall will smell as sweet from it's Greek to me were, were furthered and um, amplified by Shakespeare, certainly. Well, I'm really thrilled because of, as a former teacher myself, I don't know if you saw my background, I taught for X amount of years. Now I'm relaunching Total Tutor, which is another great venture and more into the nonprofit world of Total Tutor, where I'm looking at providing total tutor to a found, certain foundations and stuff, uh, or organizations, I mean, certain communities, lower income communities. And this will be a great part of that 
project mission of what Total Tour is trying to do, because I have a, a, my marketing agency, which absolutely could help you in certain verticals uh, to reach, especially when I one of my clients is Fabia Lingua. They are a Spanish language learning app uh, that's uh, a gaming app. Uh, that's really gotten pushed all over the place. But I understand those verticals, those superintendents. And I really think the mission's got to get it to the teachers. It can't be the superintendents, it can't be the principals, the teacher. It has, the book needs to get into the teacher's hands. And then that should be just part of it. And I wish that I knew about this organization because I would have tried to keep it going that lost the funding because it sounds like a fantastic thing. And again, getting celebrities involved, which I'm connected with celebrities. And if you talk to the arts and how important celebrities are to guide this, to keep going is something. So best place Floyd people can find information on you. Where can they go? Well, I don't have anything up yet. Uh, I'm still writing. In fact, this was one of my writing days. So I'm a day behind. Uh, I am going to put up a website uh, it's not on the publisher site yet because I haven't even submitted the books yet. It's going to take probably about another year to get them out. Uh, I do have a site up on my Facebook page about stages of learning history. That might be of interest to people. Okay. Uh, or so search can... you or find you on LinkedIn, connect with you on LinkedIn. And if you're a school district mm -hmm. interested, once the books come out, I think the bulk, it would be huge for you to get it in the bulk mm -hmm. into specific schools, school districts and say, okay, buy X amount of books. Uh, you know, uh, there's just so many different ideas in the verticals. So appreciate right it. Yeah. Anything we can do. And Neil, you mentioned celebrities. I am on a mission, a five-year mission to boldly find Patrick Stewart to write the forward to my book. See, so that would be easy for me to reach out to Patrick. I, I, I know someone who knows Patrick. So let's talk. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by, Floyd. All okay. Right. Thank you so okay. much. That was a special simulcast of Author's Corner and the Neil Haley Show, guys. Take care.